Hi guys, my name is Delhi and I am back with another video for you all. So today's video is going to be really helpful for anyone who is looking for basic beginner level projects based on Java programming language. But before we move on with the video, I would request you to please like this video and share it with your friends and family. Also, do not forget to subscribe to our channel because we keep bringing you new videos based on multiple technologies and trends every single day. So in this video, we are going to look at two different projects which are very basic yet very easy to understand and are going to help you clear your concepts of Java programming. We will be looking at two different projects. The first would be an ACM machine interface and the second project is going to be a calculator application. One by one, I'm going to show you how you can work with these two projects, how the code is executed, what functions, what methods, and what all features of Core Java have been used in creating these applications. So let us begin. Okay, so the first application that we have is the ATM machine interface or an ATM application. Now this is a very basic ATM machine interface or application that we have created with the help of Core Java concepts and OOPS concepts. As you all must be knowing how an ATM machine works, like you can probably insert your card into the machine and then perform operations on your account. It could be your current account, your savings account, and you can perform different types of operations on your account, such as you could view your existing balance or you can even withdraw or deposit funds into your account. So that is exactly what we are going to look at today in this application. So as you can see, I have created a project ATM and within this project, we have three different classes. Now the first class that we have created is the ATM class. The next class that we have is the main menu class. And then again, we have another class, which is the account class. So one by one, I'm going to show you what all code we have inside these classes and how it is going to function. So starting off, the first class is the ATM class, which extends the main menu class, as you can see here on the screen. Now, the ATM class consists of this public static void main function. Now, I'm sure you know that the entire program starts running from this point itself. Like the main method is the first method that gets executed and this is the point or the initial point from where the program starts getting executed. So here, as you can see, we have the main menu class and then we have created an object for this class, which is also termed as main menu. You can see here, this object calls the getLogin method. Now, this is all that we have inside the ATM class. Again, let us have a look at what is this get login method. Moving on to the main menu class, you can see here we have different packages. You can see we have used decimal format, utility packages. We have the IO exception as well. Now, once we begin this main menu class, you can see it is extending the account class. First, we have the scanner class here. Now, I'm sure you know why we use the scanner class. It is basically used for accepting user inputs. Next up, we have the decimal format class and the money format. Now, what is this money format here? We are actually specifying the format in which we want the currency to be displayed. That is your account balance. Again, next we have the hash map. Now, what is the purpose of using a hash map here? What we are basically going to do is we are going to give a set of records here. As you can see on your screen, we have different set of records here. Now, what this hash map does is it creates a record or a mapping wherein we have customer number and a pin number which is associated with a particular customer number. Now, this is exactly what is the purpose of using a hash map. It basically creates a mapping. Now, once we fetch the set of records to the application, moving on, we have our first message which is going to be displayed. This is 
welcome to the SMB ATM. Enter your customer number. Now this is the message which is going to be displayed initially. Once this message is displayed, we have the set customer number method. Now, what does this set customer number method do? Let us have a look at it. In this account class, as you can see, we have the set customer number method, which accepts the argument customer number. It is of integer type. Now, this customer number is the user input. That is, the user or the customer gives in a particular number, which is taken as the customer number. Okay. Now, once this is done, the application again asks for your PIN number. This message is displayed. Enter your PIN number. Again, we have the set PIN number method here. Let us have a look at what this method consists of. Here, as you can see, we have the set PIN number method. It accepts an argument, which is again of integer type. This would be the PIN number that is entered by the user. Once you have entered the customer number and the consecutive PIN number, here you can see we have a catch block as well. Now, why do we need this catch block? Suppose uh, you make any mistake while entering your customer number or your PIN number, as in you could probably enter any invalid character in place of your PIN number or customer number. In that case, what happens is this catch block gets executed and this message is displayed, which is invalid characters, only numbers. This message gets displayed on the screen. Now, suppose you do not make any mistake as in you enter any number, any set of numbers as your pin number and customer number. Next up, what happens is we have these methods, which is get customer number and we have this get pin number method. What these methods consist of here, as you can see, we have the get customer number method. Now this get customer number method, it returns the customer number, which is input by the user and the get pin number let us have a look at that here's the get pin number method now this get pin number method it accepts or rather returns the pin number entered by the user once all of it is done we have another validation section right here this is actually an if else block right here suppose you enter the customer number and the pin number but they are not associated with each other like we have these set of customer number and pin numbers which are mapped onto each other. Suppose you enter customer number which is right here and the pin number that you have entered is this one. Then what happens in that case? Then you have an error message which is displayed and that error message is wrong customer number or pin number. So once we are done with this section, we move on to the next method. But before that, let me just minimize this section. So the next method that gets executed is the get account type method. Now, what is there inside this get account type method? We have a list of few statements which get displayed one by one. Here's the first statement, which is select the account you want to access. That is the machine is asking whether you want to work with your current account or whether it is your saving account that you are going to work with or the last option says exit. That means if you do not want to work with any of your accounts and you just simply want to exit this, then you can choose the third option. Then you have to select either of these options. Either you can go for option one, two or three. Here we have used switch case since we are working with options right here. So we have listed out three cases. As you can see, the first case is get current method. The second case includes get saving method. The third case displays a statement, which is thank you for using this ATM. And the default section has an, has a statement, which is invalid choice. So one by one, let us take a look at these methods. First up, we have the get current method. Okay, so as you can see, we have the get current method right here. Now inside this method, we have another few statements. First is the current account. Then we have four options listed out for the user. First option says view balance. Then we have press two for withdraw funds, press three for deposit funds, press four for exit. And then it is asking you to choose either of these options. Okay. So if here you choose to work with your current account, then you get 
this section displayed right in front of you wherein you have to select either of these options. Okay, now suppose you select the second option which is the saving account. In that case what happens is case 2 gets executed. Now case 2 has this get saving method. Let us see what is there inside the get saving method. Here you can see we have the get saving method. Again inside the get saving method we have saving account and then we have four options, which is the same as the current account options. And then you have to choose either of these options. Okay, now suppose you choose to exit this operation. Then what happens? You get this statement displayed in front of you, which is thank you for using this ATM. And suppose you do not choose either of these three options and you enter a number say 4, 5, 6 or any number other than 1, 2 and 3. In that case what happens is you get an error message which is invalid choice. Okay, so now we have seen what is there inside the get current method and we have also seen what is there inside the get saving method. Suppose you decide to work with your current account and you choose to view your balance first. In that case, what happens is, again, we have switch case here. The first case gets executed. That is, it displays your current account balance in the money format specified by you. So, here we have the get current balance method. Now, what is there inside the get current balance method? Here, you have the get current balance method. What it does is, it returns the current balance in your account. That is, the existing balance in your account current account. Again, suppose you decide to go for the second option. Now, what is the second option? Second option is to withdraw funds from your account. In that case, what happens is this case gets executed, which is the get current withdraw input method. What happens here? Let us take a look at it. Here's the get current withdraw input method. The first statement which gets displayed is the current account balance or the existing balance in your current account. Next, the machine or the application asks you the amount that you want to withdraw from your current account. You need to input the amount that you want to withdraw. Then this if-else block gets executed. The amount is deducted from your current balance and the new current account balance gets displayed right in front of you. In case the amount that you want to withdraw is more or larger than the existing balance in your account, in that case what happens is this else block gets executed. Then the statement which gets displayed is balance cannot be negative. Now here as you can see we have another new method which gets executed. This method is the calc current withdraw which also takes argument which is the amount you enter. This is the amount that you need to withdraw. Now let us take a look at what is this calc current withdraw. Okay, so here's the method that I was talking about, calc current withdraw. This takes the argument, which is the amount you need to withdraw, your current balance here, then the amount gets deducted from your current balance and the new current balance is returned. Okay, so once this is executed, you have your new current balance. Now suppose you want to deposit funds into your current account. In that case, the third case gets executed and the get current deposit input method gets invoked. Now let us have a look at this method, what is there inside this method. Now here we have the get current deposit input method. First, the existing balance in your current account gets displayed. Next up, you need to enter the amount you want to deposit to your current account. The user input is accepted. Then this if-else block or the validation takes place. The amount which you need to deposit is added on to your existing balance and the calc current deposit method is invoked. Now what is there inside the calc current deposit method? Here as you can see, the amount you want to deposit gets added on to your existing balance and the new current balance is returned. So, the new current balance, it gets displayed right in front of you, as you can see here. And if there is any sort of mistake or error, the error message gets displayed in front of you. Now, again, if we go back here, 
Suppose you go, decide to go for option 4 which is exit. In that case, the message thank you for using this ATM gets displayed in front of you. Again, if you choose any number other than these 4 numbers which is 1, 2, 3 and 4, say you go for number 5, 6, 7 or any other number. In that case, the message invalid choice gets displayed in front of you. Now, once you are done with this section, next up we have the get saving method. Now, this method is quite similar to the get current method. The only difference is that here you can perform operations on your saving account type. Again, if you want to go for option 1, which is view balance. In that case, what happens is the first case gets executed and the message displayed is your saving account balance and your existing balance in the saving account gets displayed in the money format which has been specified by you. Next, if you decide to withdraw funds from your saving account, in that case what happens is the second case which has the get saving withdraw input method, it gets invoked. Now what happens inside this method, let us have a look at it. Now suppose you have the get saving withdraw input method get, gets invoked. Here the existing balance in your saving account first gets displayed. Next up you are asked to enter the amount that you want to withdraw from your saving account. Once you put in the amount or the input that you need to withdraw, this if else block gets executed. Here as you can see again we have the cal saving withdraw. This method gets invoked and inside this method the amount that you need to withdraw gets deducted from your existing balance and the new saving balance is returned. Then what happens is the new balance is displayed in front of you and suppose you have entered an amount which is greater than the existing balance in your saving account. In that case this error message that is balance cannot be negative gets displayed in front of you. Next up suppose you go for option 3 which is to deposit funds. In that case what happens is the third case which has the get saving deposit input method it gets executed. Now the get saving deposit input this method is right here. What happens first is the existing balance in your saving account gets displayed in the money format specified by you. Next the machine or the interface asks you for the amount you want to deposit to your saving account. Once you have entered the amount, this if else block gets executed. Now what happens is the amount that you have entered, it gets added on to the existing balance in your saving account. For that, this method which is the cal saving deposit method, it gets invoked. Now let us quickly have a look at this method. We have the cal saving deposit method right here. The amount you want to deposit gets added on to your existing balance and the new saving balance is returned. Then what happens is the new saving account balance gets displayed in front of you and in case of any error this message gets displayed in front of you. Suppose you do not want to perform any operation on your saving account and you simply want to exit this. In that case you need to choose option 4 and the result or the message which gets displayed is Thank you for using this ATM. Suppose you choose any, any number other than number 1, 2, 3 and 4. In that case what happens is this error message that is invalid choice gets displayed right in front of you. Now we have had a look at the entire code for this application. I am quickly going to show you how this application or this interface can work. As you can see, first we have this message displayed here which is welcome to the SNB ATM, enter your customer number. So here we have different set of records that we have already have a look at. Let me just quickly take any of these customer numbers. Suppose I want to go for the first this number here. Now it wants me to enter the PIN number. It displays the error message wrong customer number or PIN number. Again, if I enter this right here and I enter the correct pin number, so here it is. 
So now it is asking me to choose whether I want to work with my current account or whether I want to work with my saving account. In that case, I need to choose either of these options. Suppose I decide to go for my current account. I'll choose option one. Okay, so now I have all these options listed right in front of me. Whether I want to view balance or withdraw funds or deposit funds or whether I want to exit. Suppose I want to view my existing balance. As you can see here, the existing balance in my current account is zero dollars. Then again, I have to choose either of these accounts. So I decide to go with my current account and now I want to deposit funds. Okay, so the current account balance or the existing balance in my current account is zero dollars. And I need to enter the amount that I need to deposit in my current account. Say I want to deposit $500. Okay, so the new current account balance is $500. Again, I have to choose the account I want to work with. I want to work with my current account. Now, again, I have to decide whether I want to view balance, withdraw funds, deposit funds or exit. Next up, I want to withdraw funds from my current account. So I have selected option two. Now I need to select the amount that I want to withdraw from my current account. Say I want to withdraw $600. Okay, so here's the error message that is balance cannot be negative. Since I have $500 in my account and I decided to withdraw $600 from my account. So this operation cannot be performed. Hence, balance cannot be negative message gets displayed. Again, if I choose to work with the current account and I want to withdraw funds. So I'll go for option two. Now I need to specify the amount that I need to withdraw. Say I need to withdraw $300 from my account. So the new current account balance is $200. And again, I have these three options listed in front of me. So I'll just go for exit now. As you can see here, the message has been displayed. Thank you for using this ATM. Now, suppose I want to work with another customer number. So I'll just enter a second one. Okay, say I want to work with my saving account. So I'll go for option two. First, I want to view the existing balance in my saving account. So I chose option one. Now the saving account balance is zero dollars. So again, I want to work with my saving account. So I'll go for option two. Now I want to deposit funds in my saving account. So I'll just choose option three. Here, as you can see, the existing balance in saving account is zero dollars. I need to specify the amount that I want to deposit to my saving account. Say I want to deposit $700 to my saving account. Here you can see the new saving account balance stands at $700. Again, I decide to work with saving account. And now I want to withdraw funds from my saving account. So I choose option two. You can see the existing balance is $700. Again, I need to specify the amount that is to be withdrawn from my saving account. Say I want to withdraw $400. So what happens is the $400 amount is deducted from my existing balance, which is $700. So the new saving account balance is displayed as $300. Again, I need to withdraw some more. So I'll just go for option two, which is for saving account. Again, I'll go for option two, which is to withdraw funds. And the saving account balance or the existing balance in my saving account is $300. And again, I need to specify the amount that needs to be withdrawn. So I'll just write $100. Now the new saving account balance is $200. Okay, so now say I want to exit. So here's the exit message, which is thank you for using this ATM. So friends, now you know how this simple ATM machine interface works, how you can create this simple application with the help of Core Java concepts and OOPS concepts. Of course, this is a very basic application and this does not have many features or many high tech functions. You could improvise as per your needs. This is just for your reference purpose or if you want to understand how a basic application can be made with the help of Core Java concepts, you could definitely refer to this application.
All right, so the second project that we have today is a very basic calculator application which has been developed with the help of Code Java concepts and OOPS concepts. Now, anyone who has just begun learning Java programming language can surely refer to this application example for their better understanding of the language. So let us begin and have a look at all the types of classes that we have created for this application. As you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six classes in this application. And we also have one interface. We are going to look into each of these classes and this interface one by one in detail. Now, starting off, as you can see, we have worked with arrays, we have linked list, we have queue, and first the class calc which has the main function. This is where the execution of the entire program begins. Now the first statement in this main method, here you can see there's a string input exp, which calls the main input class and the read method. Now let us take a look at this main input class. As you can see here, we have a static method, which is the read method. Now, inside the read method, we have used the scanner class. I'm sure you all know why we use the scanner class. And for those of you who do not know, scanner class is basically used to accept command line arguments from the user. Next, we have a statement which is printed at the beginning of the application. This says input expression. That is, the user is asked to input any expression and you also have an example, which is given right here, 5 plus 2 multiplied by 9 divided by 6. Any similar expression could be entered by the user. Now, the input is accepted from the user and this input is returned back to this string, which is input exp. Now, once this has been done and the input expression has been accepted from the user. Then moving on, we have two different arrays here. Now, what is the purpose of these arrays? Let us see. First, we have the array of numbers, which is right here. And the second array is for the array of operators, or you can see array of operations. Now, why do we need these two different types of arrays? So the first array, which is the array of numbers, basically stores all the numbers which are there in the expression. Which expression? The expression which has been entered or input by the user. Now, all the numbers are selectively fetched into this array of numbers. Again, we have the array of operators. Now, what is stored in this array? The expression consists of different operators, right? So, those operators are fetched selectively into this array of operators. Now, let's take an example. Say we have an expression which goes like 3 plus 5 multiplied by 2 and divided by 1. Okay, so suppose this is the expression that has been taken by the user. Okay. Now we want to get the result of this expression by performing the entire calculation on the application that we have created. Okay, so now let us see what we can do with the calculator application. Once we have entered the expression, the numbers from the expression are going to be stored in this array of numbers and the operators, which is the add operator, subtract operator, multiply operator and divide operator, those operators are going to be stored in this array of operators. Next, as you can see here, we have also used Q. Now we have again two different types of Q has been created and these Q are of string type. Basically, we are storing the operators in one Q and the numbers in another Q. So, we have created the operations queue and we have also created the numbers queue. 
Now, once we have created the arrays, what we are going to do is, with the help of this line, we are changing or rather we are converting the array of numbers into a very generic list here. And this generic list is again being created or rather converted to a linked list here. And this linked list is being stored in this queue of numbers. Similarly, what we are doing here is that we are taking the array of operators, we are converting it into a generic list. This generic list is being converted into a linked list of string, which is again or further converted into the queue of operations. Now, moving on, we have this line of code. Here we have the rest variable. Now, what is there stored in this variable? Here you can see we have written numbers.poll method. Now, I'm sure you all know that the poll method is used whenever we want to fetch the topmost element from a queue. That is the first element which is there in a queue is fetched with the help of this poll method. So here, the topmost element from the queue of numbers is fetched and stored in the rest variable. Okay. Now, again, we have the while loop here. Next, inside this while loop, whatever the condition you want to apply could be put here. In this case, we are applying a condition where we are saying that the numbers queue should not be empty. This means that this entire while loop will be executed till the queue becomes empty. Okay. As long as we have elements in the numbers queue, this entire while loop will keep on being executed. So the first line inside the loop is this operator string that we have and we have termed it as OPR. Now this string stores what? Here again you can see we have used the poll method but this time we want the poll method to extract the topmost element from the queue of operations and that operator that is the topmost element in the queue will be stored in this OPR variable. Moving on, we can see we have the interface operate and here is the reference. This reference is for the interface operate. Okay, next up you can see we have made use of switch case here. Now this switch case block is very important for this calculator application. Let us see how. Here, as you can see, we are passing the OPR variable value into the switch case functions. Here are four case blocks that we have, and these case blocks are based on the expressions or rather the operators within the expression that has been input by the user. Now, here I have made use of dynamic binding. How? I have taken the reference or the interface reference here and here is the object that I have added on to the interface reference. As you can see, here's the divide object, multiply object, subtract object and the add object. Now, whenever the expression is being executed or we are fetching the operators, one by one they are matched with these four cases. Suppose we encounter the addition operator. In that case, what happens is this add object is invoked. Here we have the class addition or add, which you can see implements the interface operate. Now first let us see what is there inside the interface operate. You just have one single method inside the interface that is the get result method, which takes the argument which is the queue of numbers. And this right here means that it is a variable argument, which means that the entire length of this array, it depends on how many arguments you want to pass on to this method. Although it has a fixed length, but it still depends on how many elements or how many arguments you are passing on to this get result method. This array could have a single element, 
it could have two elements, it could have three elements. It totally depends on how many arguments you want to pass on to this method. Okay, so going back to the add class that we have here. Now inside this add class, since the operate interface already has the get result method, so in this case, it needs to override this method. Now inside the get result method, we have to perform the addition operation on the arguments that have been supplied to it. And once the addition has been performed, the end result or the sum is returned back to where? It is returned back to this case or the interface reference, which is the operate. Here we have the sum returned back to it. Now, once this has been done, this entire while loop gets executed again. Why? Because the queue of numbers is not empty yet. So here's the example that we are considering 3 plus 5 multiplied by 2 divided by 1. So first what happens is the numbers 3, 5, 2 and 1 are stored in the numbers queue and the operators addition multiplication and division are stored in the queue of operators. Then what happens is once the while loop starts being executed, the number 3 gets stored in the rest variable. Then we perform the switch case block, we encounter the plus operator and 5 is stored in the num. I'll just show you where 5 can be stored. Here as you can see, we have the num variable. Now, what is the num variable going to store? You can see we are again taking the poll method. This time, the poll method is going to fetch the topmost element from the queue. At first, in this line of code, the element 3 has already been fetched into the rest variable. So now the topmost element in the queue of numbers is 5. So 5 is stored in num variable and then what happens is the rest variable is equal to operate which is the interface reference dot get result method and the arguments which are passed inside the get result method is rest and num that is 3 and 5. So we have the addition operation being performed on values 3 and 5. So the result that we get is 8. So one by one, the entire expression is performed and all the operations within the expression take place one by one, depending upon the cases or rather the operators which are encountered within the expression. All the classes that are listed here, it could be the subtract class or the multiply class or even the divide class, they have very similar kind of coding. Here you can see again we have the get result method which needs to be overridden. Here the division is performed and it is depending on the for loop here. Okay, And the end result is returned back to the switch case block. So now I am just simply going to show you how we can execute this one. Let us run this application. As you can see, we have the statement input expression, which means the user needs to input any expression that you want to execute. So I am going to perform a very simple calculation. As you can see, I wanted to calculate this expression, which is 2 plus 6 minus 3. So 2 plus 6 is 8 and 8 minus 3 is 5. So you can see the result is correct. Suppose you want to perform another result and you want to work with another expression, say 4 plus 8 multiplied by 2. Okay, so here again we have the result right in front of us. It is 24. That is 4 plus 8, 12 multiplied by 2, which is 24. So this is a very basic calculator application that you can create with the help of core Java concepts and oops concepts as well. So friends, with this, we have come to the end of this video. 
In this video, I have shown you two different projects that are very basic and beginner level and are based on Java programming language. The first project that we had a look at was an ATM machine interface. I have shown you how you can create a very basic, easy to understand and easy to use ATM machine interface with the help of core Java concepts and OOPS concepts. And the second project that we have seen is a calculator application. We have used interface, different classes, and multiple functions and features of Core Java in creating these two applications. I hope you find this video useful. And if you do, then please don't forget to hit the like button. And also let us know if these projects have helped you in any way in the comment section below. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel because we keep uploading new videos every day based on multiple trends and technologies. Thank you.